Hey everybody, it's Marla Martinson and you are watching another episode of Conversations with Cupid. And did you guys know that public speaking is the number one fear in the United States? Maybe the world. Death is number five. <laughs> so people would rather be in the coffin than up giving the eulogy. <laughs> If the thought of public speaking and speaking in front of a large audience makes you sweat, you're not alone. I mean, it's it's scary. And that's why I have Mimi Donaldson with me today. Hey, Mimi. Hi, Marla. This is so exciting because Mimi is a speech coach. And she realizes that only a small amount of people have training to be an effective and engaging, polished public speaker that exudes confidence and dynamic, effective communication. So Mimi's also the co-author of Negotiating for Dummies. Oh, look. And forgot, sorry about that. She's got this amazing book, Bless Your Stress. And she has got Necessary Roughness. <laughs> so she's writing books. And I think you've got a new book up there that this is your storyboard back there, right? Yes, yeah, the new book so far. No, the book is written, but I haven't taken the storyboard down. Each white piece is a chapter, and the post-it notes on the white piece are subtopics in the chapter. And the book is about what we're going to talk about today. That is exciting. I love the way you're doing it. I've written books, and I didn't think of doing it that way, and I, I love it. That's a, that's a great idea. I mean, Mimi's full of great ideas. And, you know, how, do you, how can people grow their business by speaking? Because you hear about that. You hear you should have a book. And right. then you make us, you know, talk about your, when you're an expert in your field, that will establish you, and then you need to talk. So give us the lowdown on what you need to do there. I did the keynote circuit. Okay. I was a keynote speaker for the last 30 years, and I spoke on stages with celebrities for audiences of thousands, and that's all well and good, and I loved doing it. But it's time now to pass it on to pass the baton to people like you and to share everything I know about engaging an audience, connecting with the audience. And most of my clients are people who have their own businesses mm -hmm. who need to get up, whether it's 30 seconds, 60 seconds or 10 minutes and talk about their business. They get this wonderful opportunity to showcase their business in front of the room. And their biggest problem is what do I say? Yes, and, and then and then the way to even structure it, even if you do know, you'll forget. I've I've spoken before, and I tell you, I always forget, and then I've got to wing it all the way through. So ooh, I, don't... I have a whole chapter on <laughs> how never to wing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's and that's why Mimi's going to help me too, and you know, so if you need help, <laughs> it's 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 great. So so okay, so. They need to come to you if, like, you know, you can't get this together. So you need you need to come to you. And then if you want to, what about not only just speaking about your business, but you want to make a living at speaking. You want to be like Les Brown or Wayne Dyer or, or Tony Robbins. Or <laughs> well, I have a chapter. The second chapter is called So You Want to Be a Keynote Speaker. Okay. And my first two words of the chapter are probably not. Oh, no. <laughs> Tell us the bad news there. <laughs> I'm try I try to discourage people unless they are completely committed and have the credentials and the dues paying activity okay. to really warrant a speech. You can't just sort of decide one day you want to be a speaker. You have to have a career, have had a career in something like you have and written a couple of books as you have, and then be able to relate your credibility and your body of knowledge, what makes you really good at your at your work to what people are feeling right now and what what the need is right now you have to somehow solve a problem for people or you can't be a keynote speaker right it's not about you so it's not like no. oh, I want to be a speaker it's not telling everybody how great I am or just giving some you've really got to be wanting to give something even if you're a celebrity I've spoken on the stage with Colin Powell and yes they hired him as a keynoter to inspire because his story is really why they're hiring him. Mm -hmm. The first mm -hmm. African-American Secretary of State, how did you do that? Mm -hmm. What were you like as a kid? Did you always know? You know, stuff like that. Then you could lead with your story. Mm -hmm. And even he is such a great speaker, he didn't even lead with his story. He led with us. 
okay. what was our need right now. And it was so fabulous. He, that's what d- distinguishes the great speakers. Because Les Brown is the same way. He leads with his story. I mean, his story was, you know, he was uh, a twin and born on a floor and, you know, a po- poverty and was adopted. Well, he's a celebrity, so, so they kind of know Yeah, this. and so he, his story is so... You know, it's like I can do it and raise to this, you know, greatness, and so can you. You have greatness in you. So, that, right. yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, um, so if you want to speak and you don't, you know, maybe you don't have those credentials to be a keynote, what are some other options? What should people do? Well, most people need to grow their business. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay. They want to make more money. And there's no better way in the world than speaking to grow your business. And I really, I have a, a chapter on that. That book will come out probably January. And um, it talks about how nothing can reveal your personality like a speech. Mm-hmm. Like when you're up in front, it's not, they're not reading about you. Right. They're actually seeing your tone of voice and hearing your tone of voice and seeing your face and your expressions and you're, being, you're becoming human. And to get people to know, like, and trust you, speaking is one of the best ways that I know. So where would they be speaking then? Chambers well, or? that's the thing. When you get your speech uh-huh. and you really have a good tool, the best way to do it is speak for free because everybody there will get your message. You can leave them with a flyer with your name on it. You never know where it'll end up. Uh-huh. If it has your picture on it, it's even better. I got one of my first paid speeches because somebody from a free speech had my flyer on her desk and a guy came by her office. This was in a big company, Fortune 500 company. And he said, is that the speaker you heard that you liked? Uh That one right there? And he pointed my picture on the flyer and she go, yeah. And that was about a year before. And he said, okay, we need a speaker now. Uh Should I call her? Is her number on there? And of course my contact information was on. Yeah. And that was, you know, a couple thousand bucks because I made a nice flyer and she mm-hmm. kept it. Right. That's so correct. that's the other advantage of speaking to grow your business. You can leave something with them of value. And you and, never and, know. And tell us about the, uh, the elevator speech. Oh, yeah. There's a part of, I say, so what do you say in the elevator? I mean, you can't or go at a cocktail party or whatever, that thing where you're just going to yeah. give your 10 seconds. Well, the most important is you've got to match their energy. Okay. So people turn people off in the elevator because the guy will be real low energy. It's an elevator. And you're watching the numbers and he goes, so what do you do? You know, real low. Yeah. And the, if you start out with, does the thought of speaking in front of a group make you sweat and keep you up at night? <laughs> See, no, that's not going to work. That's part of my 30 second in a networking group where there's 60 people and they fully expect a fun sort of 30 second intro. But he is asking in this low tone. So you have to meet his energy. And the same thing. I bring up a problem first, always a problem first. Okay. And I say, you know how some people don't like speaking in front of groups? Just like that. Real low. Match his energy. Okay. And then he goes... Yeah, he'll say me or he'll say, no, not me, but my sister-in-law. Yeah. And I'll say, well, I can help with that. Uh All I say, the magic five words, I can help with that. And then he'll say, really, what do you do? And you say, I'm a speech coach. This is what I've been doing wrong. People will say, they'll say, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm a matchmaker. And then they don't know. I mean, in the past, they'd say, oh, you make, ma- you make matches? Like they thought I worked at a match factory. Or, oh, you mean, you mean you work online? Or is it like match.com? I should say, oh, you know when you're single and you're alone on a Friday night and you wish you could meet your soulmate? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I can help with that. Oh, you just yes. changed my life. Or maybe. even even better. Okay. You, you look at them, they say, so what do you do? And you say, well, do you know anybody who is single and who doesn't want to be? Okay. Something like that. Yes. You know, real short. Single doesn't want to be. Like what you said, lonely on a Friday night, wishing they could meet their soulmate. They'll go, yeah. Everybody knows somebody, right? Yeah. And then you say, I can help with that. And then they'll say, what do you do? And then you get your card out. Oh, it, perfect. Yeah. 
There okay, you go. so everybody, that you could do that with yours. Practice it with your own thing and st start with the problem and then turn it. Okay, yeah. we just got the and best that, tip of the year here. The best yeah, tip of the century. That, it's great. And how you can remember it, it doesn't have to be a problem, but I always say, and it rhymes so you'll remember it, lead with the need. Oh, lead with the need. Yes. Lead with their need. So look at them. Yes. Think who hires you and why. Yep. And that's the need of people. Now, if you're a waitress, you know when you're just driving home from work, you're so hungry and you don't want to cook and you have nothing in the fridge, I can help with that. <laughs> well, even better or more, Okay. more to the point here about waitressing, um, you know how you're complaining, you complain about service in restaurants, that it's not what it used to be, and they go, yeah, and you say, I'm a different kind of waitress. Oh, I love it. I really, I'm old school. I take care of the customer. And they'll go, really? Wow. And what's their next question? Where do you work? Exactly. <laughs> and then you tell them the name of the restaurant and you pull out your card and they come to the restaurant. Perfect. Works All for right. anything. Now, uh, okay, there's seven steps that you talk about to make it really simple. Yes. Uh, in, a, in a talk, when you're building your talk. So what are the seven? Oh my gosh, These, this is the secret to the universe. Ready? Right. Now, this is so good because you do the first two steps in the elevator and you do the first three steps in a 30 second or 60 second. First is lead with the need. So first is, because the audience is like this. Oh yeah, what do you got? You know, like, why should I listen to you? You're answering the questions. The seven steps are answering each question as they appear in the audience's mind. Then you answer it, and they are so happy. They go like this. Yeah. So the first question is, why should I listen to you? Do you even know who I am? You lead with the need. Do you think you're boring? Would you love to make people laugh when you talk about your business? They go, yeah. <laughs> and then you say, you're not step two, solution. Because their next question is, their arms are unfolded, and they go, so what do you got? What's your solution for my problem? You seem to know my problem or my need. What's your solution? Then you say, I can help with that. I'm a speech coach and I will help you craft your perfect marketing speech. Then they say, who are you? Why are you the one to do that? Aren't there a lot of you out there? So step three is what gives you the credibility? That's where you talk a little bit about your background. That's when I said, together we'll use my 30 years of keynote speaking experience in front of audiences of thousands. How many people can say that? Not many. So you pick out your most impressive thing. Like for you, it would be how many years you've been in this business mm -hmm. and been successful at it. That's a huge thing because how many people can say that? Mm -hmm. So those are the first three steps, and that's pretty much all you're going to get okay. to do, even if it's 30 seconds or 60 seconds. Right. If it's 10 minutes or even three hours, steps four and five are actually the meat mm -hmm. of the presentation. Steps four is, oh, really? They're thinking, tell me more. How do you do it? What's your hours? Does it take all year? Is it a three-hour program? Where does it take place? Do I have to come to your place? How many? So it's all the nuts and bolts. Right. And also, it's the t client testimonials and proof mm -hmm. that you work, that your method works, or that your product works. So four and five are interchangeable they can be anything from five minutes to three hours okay that's the major part of the speech and six they're finally they've had enough data mm -hmm. enough statistics now they're saying well how do you know this on a deeper level mm -hmm. why are you doing this rather than some other career and that's where you tell your why story w-h-y why what's the story behind the story when you're working 60 hours a week, what is the juice that keeps you going? Yeah. Why yeah. are you doing what you're doing? Where, where's the passion? Yeah. Why that? other than just paying the bills? Exactly. And they want to know. It gives them a little uh, window into your heart and into your soul. And they really get to know, trust, and like you with that one. Mm -hmm. And I don't do it until step six, until almost the end, because I don't believe in leading with it. 
because mm-hmm. they don't know you enough to feel for you. Yeah, I, I see people leading with their story sometime, and it, yeah, it's like, well, we why do we care that you're, you know, whatever? Well, it's just you, full of thought. Yes. And you know, other coaches will tell you to lead with your story. I, If you're really famous, mm-hmm. lead with your story. Otherwise, right. you and I need to lead with the need of the client. Yes, they want to know that. They don't care about our childhood they until care. they like yes. us a little. Yeah, yes. Yet, until they like yes. us. And, Step yeah. six, of course, the why story comes right before the call to action, which is a brilliant place for it. Because now you've given them a laugh at the beginning. Mm-hmm. That's my gift. and make people funny. And then a tear at the end because sometimes the why story is sometimes very touching. Mm-hmm. It's deep and you're revealing your soul. Mm-hmm. And then it's a call to action. What do you want them to do for you? Call for a free 20-minute assessment. Mm-hmm. Fill out the form. Buy your book. Mm-hmm. Book an appointment. Whatever it is that you want, that goes at the end. And so you talked about finding the funny. <laughs> what do you mean by finding the funny and how important is that? Well, <laughs> it's so great you're asking that. It's almost like you read my book already. The, the chapter on finding the funny starts out with, do you have to be funny? Uh-huh. And there's a, a speaker uh, story among professional speakers. And someone asked a speaker, you know, do you, do you have to be funny? And the speaker said, well, only if you want to get paid. Yeah. Exactly. In other words, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You entertainment, and we are experiencing a golden age of comedy now. I mean, I don't know if you knew that, but I've been looking, studying it, and listening to things, and going online and looking at articles. We had a, a, a play, a time in the '80s when they opened comedy clubs. They were springing up all over. Now we're in another age of digital comedy. Okay. So we have a Comedy Central channel. Yeah. We have all day comedy. We have twenty four seven. There's the even political yeah. comedy, like the Red Eye, or you know, oh, there, there's we a lot have of political lots comedy. Political we want to comedy. add comedy to everything. So yeah. yeah, we've got. We are in the golden age of comedy, and it's all a matter of timing and preparation. And there's a a, a talent to it, a craft mm-hmm. to finding the funny. There are certain comedic techniques. You can go online and find some out. I I talk about three of them in my chapter on finding the funny. They're called, one is the callback. Mm-hmm. When you call back something from the beginning. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's funny. Uh-huh. So that's called the callback. The other one is a series of three, and you've heard tons of comedians do that. The first one is sort of logical. The second thing in a series is a little more out there. And the third one is, so I have a part in my speech about men and women, can we talk, gender differences stuff, mm-hmm. which would be great for you to hear given your business. But it says, um, I leave extra early because I'm formal with time. I'm always early and I get nervous if I'm going to be late. And the reason we formal people leave very early for things is we are the designated warriors of the relationship. We have impending disaster scenarios in our heads. Usually people start laughing there. Yeah. But then I say, such as, what if there's traffic? Notice that's one. What if the car breaks down? What if the freeway is gone? So that was the series of three. So the first one was logical, second one's a little out there, third one is crazy, mm-hmm. and everybody laughs. So all thousand people in the audience laugh. Because they're they're ready for the series of three. It's a very basic comedic okay. thing. Yeah. And the third one I talk about in the book is called an act out. So instead of saying, and then the little boy doesn't like shopping anymore with mom, so he asks her, Are we just gonna do you know where we're going? Are we just gonna wander around? That's not funny. No. That's that's narrative. That's telling what the little boy said. Yeah. But if you act out the little three-year-old, uh-huh. doesn't want to shop with mom anymore. Mm-hmm. He, this is how I say it. He stomped his little boot on the floor of the mall and said, Mom, do you know where we're going? Or are we just going to wander around? <laughs> and that's the three-year-old voice. Right. So you, Actually act it out, and the audience goes wild. That's that's going to be my strong point because I'm like Lucille Ball. I do the slapstick stuff. Oh, you know, oh, I do the acting act out. Stuff. You can do one act out after the other. Do you ever watch John Oliver on HBO? 
It's called That Was the Week That Was. Or, I know. I got to check. That. Okay, it's on Sunday night. He's on for a half hour. It's only a half hour show. And he sort of wraps up the news, but it's a comedy show. Okay. So he wraps up the news for the week with comedy. Yeah. And it's on HBO. And he does act out after act out. He just does one after the other. And the audience, audiences now, golden age of comedy, they're really used to it. They mm -hmm. really expect you to be funny. And they're pretty much expecting act outs. Right. And, and you know, not that we have to be a stand-up comedian in the talk, but, yeah, you have to find the funny or people are going to be so bored, you know? Yep. Yep. So, um... Some people have a fear about the question and answer part at the end, and that's what I think I was talking to you about the other day. I said, okay, so we're going to get this talk all together and all my expertise and stuff, but then what if I don't know the answer when they ask, <laughs> ask me oh, something? At the end, some obscure you know, question or something oh, that only I, a scientist would know or whatever. You know. I'm going to give you so much comfort with this answer. Okay. Ready? Yes. Okay. There is nothing more charming and and necessary as authenticity. If you don't know the answer, you smile and say, I don't know, but it looks like I should find out. Oh, yeah, I'll get back to Give me your and, email and, and I'll get back to you. Say, does anyone in the audience know the answer to that question? Uh -huh. Somebody in the audience knows, and they are so excited to share, and you have to make sure you know you control the length. Yes. Of their answer, but you've empowered them. You empowered the questioner. It's not a stupid question. It's a great question. Somebody knew the answer, or you say, "I'll get you know, I can get back to you." But usually, you're not going to get back to people. Right. You say, "I don't know, but I should probably find out." Most questions that people ask you, you're going to know the answer to. And then, what about? I mean, this may be not really something that happens a lot, but what about hecklers? You know, if you get, if you get some. The okay, drunk, here's, you know, they had, they had well, drunk, I don't, I don't like to They had the drunk. three martini lunch or something. No, well, very rare. Rare, the, very rare. The paid keynoter is going to have a corporate audience. Mm -hmm. The Sometimes I have done, like two times in my whole 30 years, I did a cocktail hour speech outside after the conventioneers had a full day of golf in the sun and then a few too many drinks. <laughs> and it's not fun. Because you would think they'd be extra laughing. They're kind of not because they're kind of sleepy mm -hmm. and they're not hearing very well. Yes. It's not fun at all. So that's my least favorite mm -hmm. venue to speak in. Okay. But here's my philosophy about hecklers. It's going to sound very spiritual to you. But because you're very spiritual, I know that this and this answer is in my book. OK. And it took me 30 years to get to this place. Hecklers, there are no accidents, mm -hmm. and there are no wrong moves. The universe knows what it's doing. It really does. It's all the way it's supposed to be. This isn't a mistake. <laughs> this isn't like, oh, it shouldn't be this way right now. It's the way it is. Mm -hmm. The heckler is a gift. Mm -hmm. It's the exact person that you need right then. And the, and the reason will reveal itself later. But, for instance, somebody says, so why is this so expensive? Mm -hmm. And I make a joke of it now because part of my thing is to rephrase the question. or re I say, I'm not rephrasing that question. And he, everybody starts laughing. Right. So what they know that he's kind of an idiot. Mm -hmm. But they also know that I'm gracious and wonderful and I'm not cutting him up. I'm not going up against him. You'll never win. No. Because remember, there's other people in the audience. You might lose him completely. He might not like you, even if you answer him. Mm -hmm. But the other people, you will win over. So what's more important? Exactly. So if a heckler says, why is this so expensive? I'm not going to restate that one, but I will rephrase it. You, I've been asked, why is my product cost effective? Mm -hmm. Oh. Here's why. I like that. So I, in the question and answer chapter in the book, and when I coach people, we go over all the stickler questions you could possibly get. Mm -hmm. And after your career has been so advanced in the, all of these things that you've dealt with, you know the exact things. You know the hecklers. And then we find some really good, disarming, humorous answers. Mm -hmm. And also, in that heckle, 
might be an opportunity for you to make another point that's really relevant, Mm -hmm. that really will sell. If you treat it like this is exactly what's supposed to happen right now, he or she is saying the exact sentence that I need right now, then things will just flow. It's only if you go, oh, no, it's like, ew, it's icky, he's awful, and you start resisting. You know what happens when you resist. Right. It persists. It It gets worse. It's terrible. Don't resist it. Flow with it. It's what's supposed to happen. And remember, there's going to be something you can get out of it because it's the perfect thing. It happened. So it's supposed to happen. Okay. And now this is all, when you keep saying this is in my book, this is the new book coming out in January? It is. Do you want to know the title? Yes. Okay. Pitch Perfect. Yeah, I won't get in trouble with the movie. I found out. Pitch Perfect, colon, speak to grow your business in seven simple steps. Oh, I love it. I cannot wait to get that book. I I need to get one of the galleys. (laughs) <laughs> you oh I will get you a galley right away that is fantastic Mimi thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom and your tips and everybody I'm going to put all her info and links in the box below if you're watching on YouTube and what's your website Mimi Donaldson.com awesome and, and Twitter uh, I'm at Mimi Donaldson Facebook is Mimi Donaldson me, 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 yep, and, and she's got great stuff on her website. She has little clips of her speaking and tips and all this fun stuff, so I'll put the link below. You can click right to her, and thanks again, and see you guys later. Thank you, Marla.